Meine Damen und Herren, die Kanzlerin der Bundesrepublik. Ladies and gentlemen, the German Chancellor, Dr. Angela Merkel. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Please welcome our Chancellor, Dr. Angela Merkel. Madam Chancellor, I'm very pleased that you will be igniting the very first hydrogen plasma at the Wendelstein 7X. Now, you'll be aware of the fact that we've had test plasmas with helium, but today we want to direct our scientific efforts to the main cause of our research, hydrogen plasma. I'd like to welcome the State Premier of Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania, Mr. Zellering. I'd also like to welcome the Mayor of the University in Hanseatic League, city of Greifswald, Dr. Fassbinder. Madam Chancellor, State Premier, I would like to use this opportunity to express my gratitude to you personally and to your governments for the support of our research and the Wendelstein 7X project, which has been going for quite a long time now. I would also like to refer to the German Minister of Education and Research, whose representative, Parliamentary Secretary Miller, is here, and I'd like to welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a particular pleasure to have as host, if you like, the president of the Max Planck Society, Professor Martin Stratmann. Our institute is, of course, a Max Planck Institute, but it's also associated with the association, the Helmholtz Association of German Research Centers. And I would like to welcome the Helmholtz Association's president, Mr. Wiesler. Professor Wiesler, Martin, I'd like to thank you very much for your support. I would also like to welcome the members of the German Parliament, Dr. Langsfeld and Dr. Lietz, Minister Pegel, as well as a member of the European Parliament, Mr. Kuhn, and a member of the State Assembly, Dr. Schwenker and Mr. Lisko. The Wendelstein 67X project also received a great deal of financial support and other types of support from the European Commission. The European Commission has contributed 20% of the total costs of the Wendelstein 7X project. And I'm very pleased that we have the Director General for Research and Innovation with us, Mr. Robert Jan Schmitz. From the scientific landscape, I'd also like to welcome the Director General of the ITER project, Professor Bernard Bigot, the president of the Leibniz Association, Professor Kleiner, the dean of the Ernst Moritz Arndt University of Greifswald, Professor Weber, the president of the German Physical Society, Professor Gubersik, and my predecessors, Professors Pinkow and Bradshaw. Many institutes and colleagues have contributed to the success of Wendelstein 7X. For example, our colleagues in the US have contributed components to the Wendelstein 7X worth $20 million. And I would like to express my gratitude to the US government, the Department of Energy, and I'd like to also welcome the Associate Director of Science for Fusion Energy Sciences, of the Department of Energy, Dr. Edward Sinikowski. Our Polish colleagues have helped us a great deal as well. The Polish government from the very beginning saw this project as their own and contributed us with, by seconding staff and other payments in kind worth 10 million euros. Thank you. And of course, we have a very special relationship to our colleagues from the Helmholtz Association. 
the two research partner institutes who were involved in this in Jülich and the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology who contributed components, magnetic field components, and others to the contribution of the plasma heating. So Professor Bolt from the Jülich Center and Dr. Zikan from the KIT, I'd like to express my gratitude to you now. And I'm also pleased that so many heads of European research labs have come along here today working together with, as program manager of the Eurofusion Consortium, Professor Tony Donat, just representative for all the others. I'd like to just welcome him. I'd also like to express my gratitude to all of the representatives of industry, because to be perfectly frank, without them, we'd never have managed it. At some point, I'm going to have to stop thanking everyone. So I'm just going to show you our Hall of Fame, where we've written all the important scientific cooperation partners and industrial companies involved in this, so they are not forgotten. Now, of course, I'm going to not do myself any failures, if you, any favors here. If you discover that we've left out a name, just let us know, me specifically. So we're very pleased that together with our partners, we can run the new experiment. And as you know, we want to make the source of energy of the sun and the stars usable on Earth in the sun hydrogen nuclei fuse into helium. What we're trying to do on Earth here is some slightly different, though. We want to fuse deuterium and tritium into helium. Deuterium is available in our oceans in sufficient quantities, and tritium is something we would breed in a future power plant out of helium, uh, out of lithium, rather. What makes this experiment so if interesting is that it's incredibly efficient. If you just take a, f a few buckets of water, say the water in 40, 40 liters of water and the lithium that you find in a laptop battery, you can generate as much power as you would generate from 40 tons of coal. But to do it, we need temperatures of around 200 million degrees. 10 times hotter than the sun. At temperatures like these, the material becomes a plasma. And this is why we're the Max Planck Institute of Plasma Physics. And in order to contain plasma like this, we create a magnetic field change. And there are two options available, the tokamak and the stellarator. And I'm not going to bore you with the details. But just take my word for it, stellarators can give you continuous operation, and that's what you want. But naturally, there's often a lot of criticism about the fact that it takes such a long time until we'll be actually able to harness fusion energy. And I understand the impatience. I'm impatient myself. But we're often criticized for not making progress fast enough, but that's only true to a certain extent. It's not just about 200 million degrees, but we've even achieved 400 and 500 million degrees. And the parameters upon which you would measure success, we've exceeded by 100,000 times. It's about the factor 10. And now in ITA, for example, they've managed to put in 10 times more energy than it's put in there. But if you look at the tokamak, we can, you know, all of the dots on this screen are tokamak. So the blue ones, there's a couple m missing here, but Wendelstein 7X is going to catch up with all the tokamaks. So watch this space. I'd like to conclude at this point, ladies and gentlemen, by expressing my gratitude to all of our staff, for without them, we'd never have managed to achieve the success we've achieved so far. We'd never have had the Wendelstein 7X, not least through the excellent ranking of the Institute by the Scientific Advisory Board of the Max Planck Society, as well as the excellent results that we've achieved in the program-oriented funding of the Helmholtz Association, where the fusion program was ranked as the best program for energy research. So thanks to this, everyone who's worked on this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you an impression now in a little film of the assembly. And after that, the state premier, Zellering, will speak to you. And he will be followed by the German chancellor.
Madam Chancellor, MPs of the European Parliament, the German Parliament, the Bundestag, the State Premier, Parliamentary Secretary Müller, Director General Schmitz, President Stadt Stratmann, President Wiesler, District Minister, Dr. Silber, Mayor Fassbinder, Professor Gunther, guests. Those were very impressive images that we've just seen. It's truly a fascinating project. Many of those in this room have been watching its progress for a number of years now, and just seeing how it was put together like that in slow motion was very impressive, or f fast forwarded, if you like. I have to say that all of the Im impressive things that the engineers and scientists from across the globe have managed to achieve here in a number of years, not least increasing the competencies of some of the companies in this region who are involved, is very impressive. I'm very pleased about it all. It was May last year that we celebrated its completion, or May 2014, rather. And then last year, on the 10th of December, we saw that this huge futuristic-looking apparatus actually works. And the very first helium plasma was produced in the Wendelstein facility. Media from across the world, not just in Germany, reported on these, these huge events here in Greifswald, a great success. And now we are celebrating the next major step here in the Wendelstein in Greifswald, fusion research, the production of the first hydrogen plasma. I'd like to congratulate everyone involved in the process. <laughs> what we're going to see here in terms of the experiments that will take place here are ones we're all looking at. We're it's simply fascinating. The vision, of course, and the hope that one day hydrogen plasma will be able to use to generate power is very impressive. It's a green energy. And the results that you're going to be achieving, the experiences you'll be gaining in the coming years in plasma research in Greifswald are ones that are important for the entire international fusion community. And of course, I'm very pleased that this is taking place here in Greifswald, in Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania. The fact that our scientists are positioning themselves internationally in such an excellent way and attracting minds to Greifswald as a research and educational location from across its borders. The fact that you have such intelligent cooperative ties to the university research and teaching community as well means that you're strengthening Greifswald and raising its profile as a research location even more. The fact that this is possible and that there are some excellent jobs created here. I mean, it is the case that Mecklenburg Western Pomerania is the renewable pioneer as a federal state. We've seen the real opportunities that we have here. Our federal state is very much involved in developing innovation here. In the meantime, we cover our entire power requirements from renewable energy, and we are hoping in the long term to produce four or five this amount so that after the decommissioning of the nuclear power plants in the south of the country, we will be able to supply them with power. So when it comes to the generation and feeding in of renewable energy, we are the pioneers and we're very much adding in the sequence of successes here, this top level research at the Wendelstein 7.6 with important impulses for the energy research of the future, and this is why we will continue to support this important research. The basic research carried out here is a long-term investment, so that in the future as well, we will be able to meet the increasing energy demands of humanity worldwide. You've overcome a number of difficulties already. The Chancellor's been over here a few times now, and we talked about some of the difficulties, and we congratulated you on overcoming these. I'm sure there are more challenges ahead, and I wish you every success in the future in overcoming them. The fact that we can now celebrate the production of the first hydrogen plasma, hopefully in a minute, is a success that many people have been involved in. You express your gratitude to the European Commission. I would like to express my gratitude to the national government. Thank you, Chancellor, for all of the support we have received by from your government. And many Many thanks to all of 
the workers here who have contributed in so many ways. They're so committed. You're doing top level work here. I wish you every success now and in the future for your work. Thank you. Minister President, Mr. Sellering, Presidents, Professor Stratmann, Professor Wistler, other representatives from the scientific organizations, Parliamentary State Secretary, colleagues from the different parliaments, Professor Günther, staff of the IPP, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Wendelstein 7X here in Greifswald is the world's most important fusion device of the accelerator type. All of us hope for gaining important insights on whether accelerators of this type will one day be used as for the commercial production of energy. So not only German cutting edge technology is being presented today, but it is an international project and a European project as well. At my last visit five years ago, I was able to get even more insights than today because the apparatus was still open. Today it is finished and as we could see in the short film, its very dimensions are impressive. The precision. And Professor Günther said the last module was, of course, the most exciting one to see whether everything would still fit. And 20 million parts being assembled is, of course, uh, something extremely remarkable. I was delighted to accept your invitation today to produce the first hydrogen plasma with you today, the first experiment here at Wendelstein X. This is the kickoff for a unique experiment worldwide and it can take us one step closer, one decisive step closer to the energy source of the future. But at the same time, we know in order to come so far, it's quite, you need a quite long run up time. Almost 100 years ago, the British astrophysicist Arthur Eddington assumed for the first time that the energy generated by the sun resulted from nuclear fusion. And many more scientists afterwards dreamt the dream of controlled nuclear fusion. In the 1940s, works on this project started in the US, Russia, and Great Britain. Uckermark was a, has a long tradition in this research as well. And the Stellarator fans, of course, know what we're talking about here. In 1960 in Germany, and to be precise in Garching, the Institute for Plasma Physics was founded by Max Planck Society and Werner Heisenberg. But also back then, the future development of fusion research was not yet in sight. Containing a stable fusion reaction turned out to be highly complicated because conditions for nuclear fusion are extreme. Plasma needs to be heated up to 100 million degrees centigrade and be confined in the combustion chamber in a hovering state. The sci huge scientific challenge matched the financial one. And therefore, it was not so easy to warm up to the idea of fusion power research in the long run. We also have the ITER project, and I'm looking at its development every year, and also the financial development with all the positive, uh, with all the hopes I have, of course, I hope we'll also be able to stick to the budget framework. Rising energy demand and this vision of an almost inexhaustible energy source are convincing arguments for investments. So in 1994, the IPP Greifswald branch was founded. The Federation, the Federal State of Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania, and the EU decided to invest together in this project for the future. Of course, this was a strategic decision. Munich to Greifswald is quite a long distance for uh, when you look at Germany as a whole. So many colleagues from Bavaria were maybe not so happy in the beginning with the infrastructure in uh, Greifswald, but I think conditions have improved. And once you're here, life is just wonderful. <laughs> so 
So this was also about a German-German cooperative project, a German unity project. The idea was pooling forces, also in scientific work, and especially Greifswald offers excellent conditions for such projects. With Energiewerke you Nord, know, the university, and all these scientific institutions here. Without international cooperation, Mendelstein 7X would, ha would be difficult to imagine. The IPP is also an associate partner of Helmholtz Association. It is embedded in the European Joint Nuclear Fusion Program, which is coordinated by the European Atomic Energy Community, Eurocham. 1,100 staff members are working at both locations of the Max Planck's IPP. Together with many cooperation partners in Europe and worldwide, they tirelessly work on taking us all to a new energy age. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for the work you're doing. And to also my thanks also go to those who have helped to build this device. This, they stand for cutting edge, edge research and the art of engineering. I would also like to present my congratulations to Professor Günther, who was awarded the Emmy Noether distinction of the European Physical Society. My congratulations. Your scientific work of excellence as an IPP director and the work, uh, very successful work of your team deserves our great respect. I would also uh, like to mention the project leader, Professor Klinger, as an example. Every step we move forward on the central long path to a fusion power plant is, of course, a success because it is one of the most urging questions nowadays across the world of how we can meet the rising energy needs of a growing world population without failing our climate goals. We count on renewable energies and the environment for that in Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania is of course excellent. And Paris has shown this once again, also internationally, we advocate for low carbon energy supply. As an industrialized nation, we want to show that affordable, safe, reliable and sustainable energy supply is feasible without compromising on competitiveness and prosperity. The advantages of fusion energy are obvious. Hydrogen as a fuel is available in almost endless quantities and we've seen what uh, a few buckets of water can do. It is a clean energy source. It doesn't uh, harm the climate with CO2 emissions or long-lived radioactive waste. So this opens up a multitude of perspectives for applications. So we have advocated for uh, continuing the research funding. The federal state also backs this. We think this money is well invested and the research ministry also confirms this. German fusion, fusion research is of highest international standards and from the experiences gained with Mendelstein 7X, we hope we will gain important insights for the ITER reactor in f southern France where the properties of burning plasma are to be examined in more detail. When we look at nuclear flu fusion, we realize how much time and effort is needed in basic research. In addition to knowledge, a good deal of stamina, creativity and audacity is required. Those who tread on unexplored ground often don't know where this path will lead them. Sometimes you end up in a deadlock. Sometimes you're running in circles. That's part of the job hazard of a scientist. But of course, it is even more wonderful when something new opens up that hasn't been known before. And what we always need to keep in mind is that basic research it cannot always be planned with regard to time frames. Sometimes there are side uh, effects, side findings, but without basic research, you will just not be able to gain some important insights. Ma Max Planck once put it this way, somebody who's come that far that he is not wrong anymore, well, this person has stopped working. So wait for the next error to see that you're still uh, working at full speed. 
satisfying questions were found to many questions already, but what is also interesting to see is that always new questions are coming up. So basic research will never come to an end. New tasks will continuously open up as a basis for further research. And findings will serve as a basis for a good and better life. Better health, nutrition, mobility and energy supply, of course. It is often very difficult to see how insights from research can be applied. We know that from many fields. Space is one example, military research. So suddenly there were solutions on the civil market that couldn't have been foreseen. So that is very important uh, also for Germany. Of course, we must not forget to think in long terms. We always want to gain insights very quickly, of course, but we need to think in the long term because then we will be able to open up untapped potential. We want to maintain our high standard of living and we will only be able to do so if we are more innovative than others on this planet. We are not alone here. We feel this in Europe and we also feel this outside Europe, of course. So it is very important that our society is open for natural sciences, that it is willing to get involved with new technological developments. And all of us know that in Germany we tend to give risks more thought than opportunities, so we always need to find the right balance between opportunities and risks to move ahead. And Another important task um, on which the Federal Ministry for Education is working, scientific insights, uh, results from basic research, and uh, have to be translated into business models later on. So in the past, there were many things that were invented in Germany, for example, the computer, Konrad Zuse, or the MP3 player, but marketing uh, happened somewhere else. All in all, I think, however, that we have an excellent reputation from basic research to applied research. The German innovative system is seen as competitive and very attractive. And I would also like to point out that between 2005 and 2015, we have increased R&D expenditure by 65% and raised it to 14.9 billion euros. This goes hand in hand with more funds made available by businesses as well. So we are coming close to the 3% goal, a goal that all member states of the European Union have signed up to. However, not all of them are meeting this goal. Of course, we want to use the funds provided by the Federation as efficiently as possible and the high-tech strategy. Pooling the innovation activities of the federal government has turned out to be very successful. We also try to promote non-university research we have prolonged the Joint Initiative for Research and Innovation, and um, I think that uh, and the Federation has t um, uh, will be covering the increase of funds over the years. And in the coalition negotiations, I realized that many uh, federal states are also very proud of the funding they provide to their non-university research institutions. When I suggested that the federation might fully cover the cost for the Max Planck Institute, the states said, no, we also want to make our contribution because we value their work. We um, also have this excellent university here in Greifswald. The federation also is covering the costs uh, incurred under the Federal Training Assistance Act in order to limit costs for the federal states. So, and we were delighted to see that the states made this money then available to universities. The Excellence Initiative has turned out to be a very effective tool to give cutting edge re research at universities new momentum. Only last week, the International Expert Commission of Experts, headed by Professor Imboden, has made some important suggestions for the future, but I think it uh, has been shown that this initiative has been very successful. Uh, just as the Pact for Higher Education, we have record numbers of students in 2015. Roughly 2.8 million young people were enrolled at German colleges and universities, which is a new record high. We only have to make sure that all of those who start to uh, enroll um, also finish school and get a degree. 
so I'm glad to see that there are first projects for students who haven't finished their studies can go back to vocational training and I visited such institutions. Uh, there needs to be uh, a possibility for switching between modes of education as well. So this quantitative result of these, this huge number of students at universities means also that high quality academic education needs good needs a good basis. We need science, na natural sciences and engineering and know-how in this, these areas when we look at fusion research. So we continue to advocate strongly for raising young people's enthusiasm in the so-called MIN subjects. And especially at the Science City Greifswald, this might be a little easier than elsewhere because you have all these practical examples. Ernst Moritz Arndt University, together with the IPP and the Leibniz Institute for Plasma Research and Technology, uh, forms an also internationally unique center of competence in the field of plasma research. The challenges linked to building and operating the research infrastructure also contribute to the training of excellent young scientists, both in scientific jobs and in skilled jobs. This region offers great opportunities when it comes to appointing top scientists, and that, again, is excellent for science and teaching. Uh, building Wendelstein 7X was, of course, very important for the region. 400 staff members work at the IPP in Greifswald. Many contracts from the investment funds for Wendelstein 7X and many services contracts were awarded to local companies, which, of course, uh, safeguards jobs in the region and the Lord Mayor and um, the members of the City Committee know that unemployment is a major problem here, uh, more than the region around Munich, for example, so this is also something very important for us. Within two weeks after Halle, now Greifswald, I visited two research institutes in Germany's east and that shows that 25 years after German unity, we have a very attractive research landscape also in the eastern German states, a research landscape we can be proud of. Wendelstein 7 is, is, of course, a wonderful example for cutting-edge research made in Germany. Max Planck Society and Helmholtz Association achieved something remarkable here, and we will have a closer look at this shortly. And who knows, maybe one day, looking back to this experiment today, we will speak about a glorious hour of the history of science. In any case, it's very impressive to see what you're doing here in order to tame the sun's fire on Earth. I would therefore like to wish you every success, lots of progress, a lot of commitment and motivation, no resignation in ca case of setbacks, and good results for all of us. Thank you very much for inviting me today. For Bundeskanzler Madam Chancellor, State Premier, thank you very, very much for your encouraging words and for your very positive expression of support, which, of course, will galvanize into even more action. Ladies and gentlemen, we now wish to go with the German Chancellor, who is going to be switching on the first hydrogen plasma in the control room. We'd like to ask for your understanding that, unfortunately, not only our guests of honor from the front row can go up, However, don't be too sad because we will be showing you it all on the screen, both here in the main hall and in the auditorium. You will be able to see the hydrogen plasma be ignited. And if you didn't get a chance to see it properly or you'd like to see it again, you'll be able to see it again. Thank you very much. See you in a minute.
So, my Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chancellor, you are in the control room, and that's the button you have to press. But let's see how far we are, whether we're ready for it. The thing is, we were just talking about this earlier on. We're going to, we've created super con conductive coils, and you can see up there that we've got temperatures of around 4 Kelvin, roughly, minus 270 degrees Celsius. And we've talked about this. We're aiming at generating 30 minutes of plasma, not now, in 2020, but we have to get the prerequisites going. You can see that the machine's cold on the right-hand side on the display. You can see that we've created a magnetic field cage, which is the light line that you, that you can see up there. You can see the temperatures. And then on the right, you can see the electric current. We've got 20,000 amperes going through the coil. So the magnetic field cage is ready to go. So now I've told you everything you need to know, I think. Well, the most important things are the machine is cold. The magnetic field cage is up and running. And in a moment, when Madam Chancellor presses the button, you're going to have to press this one here. Quite hard. I told you, it's quite hard. So you can see the coils down there. It's a pentagon shape, and all of the coils are in it. There's a little button that we'll give you to take home later. When you press the button then, Madam Chancellor, the countdown will begin to the first discharge of a hydrogen plasma. That'll take 60 seconds. And w you will see in the screen there, and we'll see up here, the first hydrogen plasma. So, Chancellor, press the button. There we go. Wonderful. You've done it. So the countdown is on. And when we see the f initial plasma, you'll be a bit disappointed because it'll only be a couple of milliseconds, but then we'll be showing it all in slow motion on an endless loop in film just a few seconds later. So you'll be able to watch that in peace, as it were. You'll have a bit more time to see it. All right, you can see that our everything's being primed for the discharge, the plasma heating, the scientific devices, the inlet valve of the hydrogen gas, because of course it's hydrogen that we're aiming for here. 20, you can see we're counting down. I wanted to be able to see it here, so in a minute you'll, it's ready to go, any minute, any second, as it were. That was it, we saw it just for a second.